Alright, so we've been doing uh, Galatians chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4. Today was supposed to be chapter 5 and chapter 6. So just to tell you in advance, chapter 5 and chapter 6 is just application. It's purely application. But if you understand chapter 1, 2, 3, and 4, uh, which sometimes you think you have until you go and then you go back again and realize, oh, I've not even seen this, I've not seen that. You begin to realize... Uh, so Paul's episodes are like that. You have to understand his thinking first, his arguments, his examples. And once he has done that, then the application becomes easier. Most of the times we find we are teaching from application, not knowing where the argument came from. Mm-hmm. Are you understanding? Yeah. And then I've also, under- also seen that most of us most likely don't like going through books. <laughs> we prefer a small the scripture we like there. I am crucified with Christ. Yes, Never the live, yes. I live. Yes, yes. not I, but I like, you know, so we love that yes. one. Yeah. Yeah. Without understanding, how did Paul arrive at telling these guys, I am crucified with Christ? Yeah. So uh, we need to learn how to go through books. Mm. Uh, so let's let's try and see if we can map it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. It's normally an attempt. Mm-hmm. Since you've, since you've gone through Galatians. Yes. Now you, now you understand it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So chapter one was about what? <laughs> <laughs> chapter 1 so that's Paul first of all there are many details he talks about himself mm-hmm. who sent him you know mm-hmm. who sent him is very important mm-hmm. yeah his mission mm-hmm. statement mm-hmm. he's speaking to the churches in Galatia mm-hmm. so it's not just one church there are many churches mm-hmm. and then he does not spare he just immediately goes into that attack mode mm-hmm. I marvel verse 6 I marvel that you are also removed from what from him that called you in the into the grace mm-hmm. of Christ to another gospel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one of the biggest issues in chapter one is what? Another, another gospel. gospel. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Another gospel. So he describes that, what that gospel is. Mm-hmm. So he says things like, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you mm-hmm. and would what? Pervert the gospel. So he's very concerned about that perversion, eh? Mm-hmm. Pervert. And he call that perversion a twisting. Yeah. Mm. It's a twisting of a gospel. Mm-hmm. It's good news, yes, but it's twisted. And once it's, tw- when it, once it's twisted, it affects the entire good news. Mm. Are you understanding? Yeah. So we have to be clear when we are in settings, the gospels we are receiving, mm. are they the true gospel or are they what? Twisted, twisted. gospels. Mm. And Paul now will go ahead to show us what the twisted gospel is. Mm-hmm. And in showing us what the twisted gospel is, we'll be understanding what the true gospel, gospel. is. Mm-hmm. Are you see? Are you see that? Mm-hmm. And then he goes and begins to explain to us in chapter 1 how number 1 the understanding or his understanding of the gospel was not by man. Mm-mm. He was tutored mm-hmm. somewhere. Huh? Mm-hmm. He received the gospel. He says I received it. I received the gospel. Then he says for three and a half years I was in the desert of Arabia. Mm-hmm. Revelation. Remember what he said, we said in the first session? Yeah. Revelation. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Revelation then what? Plus what? Plus work. <laughs> and it produces what? Value. Mm-hmm. So Paul is there and he says, after that, I went to see Peter. Mm-hmm. The one still. Mm-hmm. I went to see Peter. I was there for 15 days. Mm-hmm. A 15 days Zoom call with Peter. Mm-hmm. Just trying to explain to Peter the gospel he has received. Yeah. And Peter was okay with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Still chapter one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Next time you go through Galatians, you'll be knowing these blocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So now he says, when I'm coming to teach you, I'm not coming to teach you things that have been taught by a man. I'm yeah. coming to teach you things that are received by what? By revelation. revelation. Are you seeing that? Mm. So he says, after that, I went up. Yeah? Mm-hmm. He says, uh, after that, let me see chapter 1. He goes, three years, went up to Jerusalem, verse 18 there. He found Peter. He talked to Peter. He was unknown by people. He said people just used to know him as that guy who... Who tormented the church, but you yeah. see, there, there are no mug shots, yeah. So Paul is safe for now. <laughs> mm. Then, so basically, chapter one is just dealing with what how he receives the gospel, he's against the perversion of the gospel, and he's about to unpack to us what this perversion is. Mm. But he has also introduced to us the fact that he encountered who Peter, yeah. who is going to be a very crucial character in the book of Galatians, especially chapter two. Mm. Are you clear? Yeah, so that's chapter one for you of Galatians. Mm-hmm. One of the things about studying the Bible through books and understanding what each chapter says, it means once you are good with it, once you begin to understand it nicely, Mm. it becomes very easy to frame the entire book. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I used to have, uh, one of my, the best books I used to really like reading was Hebrews. So I know what chapter 1 is saying, how it leads to chapter 2, how it leads to chapter 3, like that. Mm. By time, and it's a whole argument again by Paul. Yeah. Are you understanding? Mm. And if you're studying Paul, you begin to understand that some things he repeats. Mm -hmm. Some things he repeats. Mm -hmm. I am really being tempted to avoid going into promises. <laughs> there are some things he repeats. Mm. Yeah. And you find there's a way he has repeated it in Romans. Like the promises, he's talked Romans chapter 4. In Galatians, he's talked about promises in Galatians chapter what? 3 mm. and 4. Mm. In Hebrews, he's talked about promises in chapter 6. Mm. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. So diff different, same, 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 same matter, addressing different things, but using the same gospel. Mm. So chapter 1 is that. Then chapter 2. <laughs> Mapping out Galatians. Chapter what? Mm. Chapter, chapter, chapter 2. Chapter 2. Now, this is where Paul begins to go into the nitty gritty. Chapter 1 was about um, me. I am so miffed with you guys because you have twisted this gospel. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Are, are, are you clear? Mm. So chapter 3 comes and says, 14 years later, I go where? To Jerusalem. Mm. And I go tactically with Barnabas and what? Titus. Titus. So I showed you why he went with Titus. Titus is a Greek, he's not circumcised. Mm. And Paul says, I was there, not with anybody else, but with the ones who were what? Mm -hmm. High there. Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. In fact, he says, these people are people of what? Reputation. Mm -hmm. So I said, I set them apart and explained to them the gospel I had. Mm. Yeah? Mm. And Paul says, while we were there, nobody had a problem with Titus. Mm -hmm. Because Titus is a Greek, he's not circumcised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, clear? Mm. That's chapter 2. So now Paul is beginning to add a building block to his argument. Nobody talked anything about Titus. So say, except some false brothers who intruded the meeting with things, mm -hmm. trying to do what? To ag agitate. That is in verse 4. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That is in verse 4. So he shows you that. He says, okay, fine. So when I explain to these guys about the gospel I received, yeah? Mm -hmm. These guys were okay with me. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. And now we are agreeable of the fact that I'm around verse 7 there, or verse 8 there. See, we are agreed with the fact that God is working in Peter, mm -hmm. and the same God is working in Peter towards the Jews. He's working in me towards what? The Gentiles. So technically speaking, Paul has inched in. <laughs> he has inched in, and he is saying, Peter is okay to go to the Jews. I am okay to go to what? To the Gentiles. I have explained to you my gospel. Mm -hmm. And these guys come with a consensus. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And they say, okay. Uh, he says, uh, let me see, verse number what? Verse 6, he says, but these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they are, it maketh me no matter. He says, God accepts no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. Paul says, I have to explain it to them. They did add anything to the gospel, I explained to them. Mm -hmm. So they were agreeable with it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Are you clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so he says, but contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the circumcision was committed to me, as the gospel of circumcision was committed unto Peter, for he that wrote effectually, which is God, eh, mm -hmm. in the apostleship uh, to Peter, in the apostleship to the circumcision, the same was mighty, what? In me towards what? The Gentiles. Yes. Verse 9. Verse 9 says, and when James, Peter, or Cephas, and John, who seemed to be the pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave me what? The right hands of yes. fellowship. Now, verse 11 is now things are beginning now to go down. Verse 11, he says, now when Peter came to Antioch, mm -hmm. yeah, I withstood him to the face. I withstood him to the face. And the plot is here. Peter comes to Antioch and Peter is fellowshipping with the Gentiles which Paul is reaching towards. Mm -hmm. Paul is an authority just like Peter is an authority. Peter is an authority of the gospel to the mm. Jews. Paul is an authority of the gospel to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So, Peter has come to Gentile land, mm -hmm. where Paul is an authority. Mm -hmm. And when he's mingling with them, he's okay. Until it was noised that certain Jews are coming who have been sent by what? Yes. By James. Mm -hmm. And that's when things began to go south. Mm -hmm. So that's why Paul says, I withstood Peter to the face. Mm -hmm. Why? Because now Peter began to tactfully what? Withdraw. Mm -hmm. Lest he should be found Doing what? Eating. Mingling and eating with the Gentiles, staff of the Gentiles, which Jews are not supposed to eat. eat. And Paul is saying, what's wrong with that? Mm. Mm. <laughs> so, verse 14, but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew, 
live after the manner of the Gentiles, which means you're eating with us. Mm -hmm. You've been enjoying stuff here. Mm -hmm. And not as the Jews do. So when you are doing that, you're not doing as the Jews do. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. He says, why are you compelling the Gentiles to live as you do? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We who are Jews by nature are not sinners of the Gentiles. Knowing that a man is not what? Justified by works. So Paul is saying this, we are Jews by nature. We follow the law. Mm -hmm. And we know this law has not been sufficient. Mm -hmm. to save us to the end mm -hmm. yeah being Jews by nature we recognize the fact that we needed Christ mm -hmm. so the law was not enough mm -hmm. or rather the law was not sufficient mm -hmm. so Christ was what the all in all Christ was sufficient mm -hmm. so we who are Jews by nature realizing that the law could not help us mm -hmm. we jumped into Christ mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. why did we jump into Christ because the, the law could not help us mm -hmm. Why are we telling the Jews, the Gentiles we are reaching out to, to, do, to begin to do things of the law, which we left to jump into Christ? Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, I have to repeat it in different languages for you to get it. <laughs> yeah. it, be, it begins to become very clear. Mm -hmm. So he says, so Peter, when you begin to withdraw and move backwards, because you are scared that Jews will find you, you are enforcing what? A twisted gospel. Mm -hmm. Because you are saying... Jesus was not sufficient to save us to the end. Yeah. Why are you scared when you are free? Mm -hmm. you're not, your theology and your actions are not lining up. Mm -hmm. And you being a pillar, because he has told us in chapter 1, yeah. Yeah, you being a pillar and called out to the Jews, mm -hmm. how easy is it going to be for you to deliver the Jews from the law when you're already stumbling at the law and the Gentiles right now in Antioch? Mm -hmm. Are you clear? Yeah. I hope it's making sense. Yeah. <laughs> so he says, knowing that man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be what? Justified. Sorry. We might be what? Justified by the faith of Christ. So what justifies, what Paul is saying, what justifies is what? The faith of Christ. Are you clear? Mm -hmm. As Jews. Sorry, guys, I have to repeat a little repeat again and again so you get it mm -hmm. verse 17 but if while we seek to be justified by christ we ourselves are also what found sinners how are you found sinners we are found sinners when you go back to the law yeah. mm -hmm. because you're saying that what christ delivered was not sufficient yeah. is therefore christ a minister of sin god forbid he says for if i build again the things which i destroyed how did i destroy that thing I destroyed that thing when I moved from the law and jumped into Christ. Mm -hmm. So the destruction of the law or the impact or the effect of the law in my life was fulfilled when I jumped into Christ. Mm -hmm. So for if I build again the things that I destroyed, I make myself what? A transgressor. So if I go back to the thing that could not save me, yeah, mm -hmm. I become what? A transgressor. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. That word transgressor is important because you shall find it in chapter 3. Yeah? Okay. He says, For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I may live unto God. So listen to this. I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I may live unto God. How am I dead to the law? The next scripture. Crucified with Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is how I am dead to the law. Mm -hmm. So we love that scripture. I am crucified with Christ. <laughs> yes, not I, but Christ lives in me. Yeah, we love it. But yeah. Paul is arriving at, that is an arrival point. Yeah. It's not that, it's not, it's not that door. No, so it's an arrival point. Paul is saying that I have, I have <laughs> he says, I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto Christ. I am what? Crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son. So he's saying the flesh is now driven by the faith of the Son of God. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Who loved me and gave what? Himself yes. for me. Now, listen to this. Verse 21 says what? I do not do what? Frustrate the grace of God. What is frustrating the grace of God? Going back to the works of the law. Mm. What is now frustrating the works? The grace, the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Wow. So you see that? Mm. So Paul is telling us, I am not frustrating. I don't want to be a participator in frustrating the grace of God. How do I frustrate the grace of God? When I go back to what? To the law that I died to. You have to eat this thing, marinate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then now he goes to chapter 3. I'm not even done mapping chapter 
because now I have to explain. I'll have to tell some things here. Yeah. So now you go to chapter 3. It says, Oh foolish Galatians. Yeah? yeah. Who has what? Bewitched you. you. That used to be the key scripture in Galatians. Mm. We used to like it, but we didn't know why we liked it. Sometimes you can like a scripture not knowing you are a victim of that scripture. Yeah? Mm. <laughs> so who has what? Bewitched you that you should do what? Not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. So the bewitching, the hypnosis, or the hypnotizing, is what? So there's something we, cl- we clarified last week. Mm-hmm. Number one, the bewitching comes by what? The seal. Teaching. Yeah, it comes by teaching, because the Judaizers were coming to teach. Mm-hmm. So this hypnosis, <laughs> hypnosis, or bewitching, bewitching, comes by teaching. teaching. The teaching of the Judaizers. Taking them back where? To the low. Are you clear? Mm. When they take them back to the law, they frustrate the grace. the grace. They frustrate the grace. And when you frustrate the grace, he's saying, he's saying, when you do this, you are making this guy what? Disobedient. Disobedient. So who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? What is the truth? The truth is you are jumping and dying to the law and jumping into what? Into Christ. Mm. That's the truth. When you go back to the law, you are frustrating the grace. Therefore, you are, you are acting outside of the boundaries of what? Of truth. That's chapter 3 of Galatians. It says, this only would I learn of you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law? Did the law deliver to you the works of the Spirit? Uh-uh. Say no. It says, or by the hearing of faith. So, Paul is in turn for telling us that the works of the Spirit, or the, or the, the, the grace of the Spirit, or the effect, effect, efficacy of the Spirit comes by the, the hearing of what? Okay. Of faith. Mm-hmm. Now, the law in this regard, Galatians chapter 3, is the law we know, the law in the Old Testament, yeah? Mm-hmm. But we can also have our own laws that we have established that operate in the same manner. Mm-hmm. There are religious things that we have entered into that are actually playing the same thing the law was doing. Are you understanding? Mm-hmm. Which means they should circuit the efficacy of the spirit. Mm-hmm. And they make us do what? Become participants in frustrating what? The, the grace, grace of God. Of God. Mm-hmm. It's a performance-based religion. Mm-hmm. Okay. He says, are you so foolish having begun in the spirit, you're now made perfect by the flesh? Which means you can't begin the spirit and then the law comes and perfects it. Mm-hmm. When, I ca- when I came there, we came and killed the things of the law. Mm-hmm. We died to the law. Which means now you are in spirit. Mm-hmm. Are you understanding? Mm-hmm. So you can't begin the spirit and decide, I will end up perfecting this spirit by going back to the things of the law. Mm-hmm. Guys, this is going to help you, mm-hmm. especially in these days. <laughs> he says, have you suffered so many things in vain, if yet be in vain? So he, he who ministers to you the spirit and the what? And the working of what? Of miracles. That is very important because they are becoming scarce, eh? Yeah, the working of miracles. Forget the, forget the other theatrics you normally see. He says, He who ministers to you the Spirit and the working of miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of Spirit? Yeah. Absence of the working of miracles is also presence of the working of the law. Mm-hmm. Or anything that is deemed to be a law in that setting. This is not my Bible. This is okay. It's my Bible because I own it. Mm. But all of you have Bibles, so mm. I'm reading something. You also what reading? Mm. Now and then he brings in a case study. Sorry, guys, we're going back again. Eh? Mm. He brings in a case study and he says, "What Abraham? Mm-hmm. He says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for what for righteousness. Yes. Yeah. Know ye therefore that which know ye therefore that we that the day which are of faith the same are what." Children of Abraham. Now, this is a very scandalous statement I told you last week. Mm-hmm. Because if the Gentiles have now believed in Christ, yeah, mm-hmm. and they have believed by the hearing of faith, mm-hmm. Paul is saying the Gentiles who have had and believed Christ by the hearing of faith mm-hmm. are also children of what? Of Abraham. Abraham. In the day and the context of Paul, this is scandalous for the Judaizers. Yeah. Because the Judaizers placed Abraham in a particular space. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So Paul is now lighting up fires. And good fires for that matter. Mm. He says, now, this is what we did last week. This is Abraham here. Yeah? He said, the scripture foreseeing. Remember that? Yes. He says, the scripture foreseeing what? That God would justify the heathen through faith. Mm-hmm. Preached before the gospel unto what? Abraham. Abraham. So Abraham 
is here. The scripture foresaw something. This mm-hmm. is the cross of Christ. We thought we did that last week. Yeah. He said the gospel is coming here, yeah? Mm-hmm. So the scripture foresaw that. When the scripture foresaw that, Abraham was done what? Preached to. Mm-hmm. Scripture foresaw that all of us are going to be here. Mm-hmm. Yeah? In fact, he says the heathen. <laughs> yeah? So Abraham was preached to. So God tied us already in Abraham. Mm-hmm. I'm going to save these guys. Mm-hmm. See, the scripture foreseeing that we are going to be here, wrapped into Christ. God decided to what? Let me begin to preach to Abraham. Mm-hmm. This is their father, Abraham. Mm-hmm. God preached to. Mm-hmm. Concerning what? The heathen mm-hmm. coming into the commonwealth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is scandalous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now you'll understand why Jesus used to say, I'm a stumbling block. Mm-hmm. I'm a rock of offense. Mm-hmm. Because I'm the one who's going to trigger and open the door for the world to come in, to mm-hmm. the commonwealth. Mm-hmm. And everybody who tries to engineer particular things to stop them from coming, it will be frustrating the case. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, once, once we become Christians, there are some particular rights and titles, entitlements we get. Mm-hmm. We feel like we can decide who comes in and who doesn't come in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, look at this. He says, uh, So he preached to Abraham before the gospel, saying, In you shall what? All nations. nations. And I asked you a question last week. You didn't answer me. I told you don't answer me. I asked you when God was teaching, preaching to Abraham at this particular point. Was Abraham not what? A heathen. Yeah. He was a heathen. <laughs> yeah, he's coming from that. It's coming from other gods, but yeah. you are of the Chaldeans, yeah. and it's being integrated slowly by slowly. Yes. So Abraham can relate. Mm. <laughs> he was not a Jew. <laughs> Abraham can relate. Mm. Okay. For as many, he says, for as many as are of the works of the law are under what? The curse. Mm-hmm. So the law is here. Mm-hmm. And you say, if you are under the law, you are what? The curse. The curse. The curse. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Yes. For as many as under for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, cursed is everyone that what? Continues, continues, continues. Yeah? yeah. Continues. That's why Jesus is, is being fought here. Mm. Cast is everyone that is continuous, not in all things that we, not in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Because the, it is it was impossible for even the perfect Jew to fulfill the law. Mm. So you can't continue and finish and say, I'm a complete Jew, I have fulfilled it. It's only Jesus who could fulfill what? The law. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. But no man is justified by what? The law. So there's no justification here. Mm -hmm. So which means there are no just here. Mm -hmm. Now now you'll begin to understand those scriptures normally called the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. Why are they living by faith? Mm -hmm. Because in living by faith, they are living away or they are breaking or they are dying to the the law. Mm -hmm. He says, and the law is not of what? Not of faith. So the law is not of faith. There it is. Paul is explaining. The law is not of faith. But now in this, in this explanation, Paul is also defining what the true gospel is. The law is not of faith. But the man that does them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of what? The law. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. From this curse, as it is from the curse of the law, being made what? A curse. So when he hung there, he was made what? A curse on your behalf. For the penalties of the law were now being meted to him, Mm. even when he had fulfilled the law. Mm. Mm. Is it it justice? The penalties of the curse are being meted to him, even though he has fulfilled the law. Mm. So the only thing that qualifies him to be in that position is the love he has for you. You're the one who's supposed to be rightfully penalized there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he says, curse is every man that hangs on the tree. So that, 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 that is every man that hangs on the tree that the blessing of Abraham, that what? The blessing of Abraham might do what? So what is the blessing of Abraham? So that if, yeah, so the free gift of righteousness can come to what? Yeah, that is the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham is not necessarily his prosperity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's what? The right standing with God. Wow. Mm-hmm. Hmm. 
righteousness mm. that was meted to him because he believed. Yeah. Abraham, the same way you believe like this, there are guys I'll talk to and they'll believe yes. like you. Mm-hmm. And they'll come into the commonwealth. Wow. Mm-hmm. Jesus used to tell them, it's because of your hard heart. Mm-hmm. Are you seeing that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I hope it's making sense. Yes. I know last week he thought you have understood it. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, uh, verse that the blessing of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles mm-hmm. through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through what? Through faith. Mm-hmm. Are you seeing that? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think I need to jump some things. Uh, let me go. Let's, let's go down to verse 19. He says, therefore, when, therefore, what, what does the, the law serve? Because the law had to be introduced anyway. Mm-hmm. So when served the law, he says, it was added because of what? Translation. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. So the law was added here. Yeah, 430 years later. That's what the Bible says. 430 years later. Mm-hmm. Till, till where? Till the cross. Mm-hmm. So these guys, every event to try and fulfill the law to get their own righteousness mm-hmm. was frustrating. Yeah. They had to come to a point where they start screaming, we need what? We need help. Yeah. We need help. There are things sometimes even placed as lose upon yourselves. Mm. And every time you try to fulfill it, you're collapsing. Mm. You try and you're collapsing. Mm. <laughs> because you've appointed yourself as your own what? Savior. Mm. <laughs> so, as, that is the nature of the law. Yeah. It awakens. What, what you should understand, first of all, Adam is here. And Adam falls. When Adam falls, the fallen man, yeah? The fallen man is already dead. He has a death nature in him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he can actually not even fulfill the law. Yeah. Every time the law does, the law awakens that deathly thing. Mm-hmm. So it has to start screaming. I need help. Mm-hmm. That help is coming here. Mm-hmm. At the cross. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I can see you're getting it, so I think I need to jump. <laughs> uh, let me see if we can jump to chapter 4. So we can see. If we jump to chapter 4 and finish, we'll finish today. So chapter 4. Uh, let's go towards the end of chapter 3 so we see something he says in verse 27 for as many of you as have been baptized in Christ have put on what? Christ have you seen that? Mm-hmm. verse 28 there is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither born nor free there is neither male nor female or for ye are all what? one in Christ now verse 29 and if ye are in Christ then you are what? Abraham's seed so these ones who are in Christ they are what? Abraham's seed. Are you seeing that? Mm-hmm. They're Abraham's seed. And because they're Abraham's seed, they're what? Yes. Okay, yeah. So they're what? Heirs. Yes. So once you see that word heirs, Abraham's seed, heirs, Abraham's seed, heirs, then it's preparing you for the next chapter. Mm-hmm. Because when the Bible was written, it was written in chapter and verse. Mm-hmm. So you see that? Yeah. So heirs. So now Paul is speaking now from what? You are Abraham's seed, therefore heirs. So when he comes to chapter 4, he says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he's what? A child. Oh, so you can have an heir who's a child. Yes, in that context, they were. Mm -hmm. They were predisposed to inheriting something. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't. Why? Because they were children. Mm -hmm. What made them children? They were under what? The law. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. And the heir, as long as he's what? He's a child. Differs nothing from what? A servant. Oh, that is is like an oxymoron, yeah? Yeah. So you have an heir, and then he's a, the heir becomes what? A A servant. servant. Why? Because he's under what? Tutors and governors. Who is a tutor and a governor? You always have to ask the text. Mm. Yeah? So you go back. (laughs) Let me see if I can get it. Uh, You go back to verse 25 of chapter 3. In fact, verse 24, he says, Wherefore the law was what? Our That's schoolmaster, right. our tutor, our tutor mm-hmm. to bring us unto Christ. Mm-hmm. This one was supposed to bring you to Christ. Mm-hmm. Its work was supposed to bring you to Christ. Are you seeing that? Mm-hmm. To bring you to Christ. That, that we might be what? Yes. Justified by faith, not justified by the law. Mm-hmm. The efficacy of the law is bringing you to Christ, but it cannot bring you, do what? it cannot give you righteousness. Mm-hmm. So he says, so you can see where the tutor is. Mm-hmm. The tutor is what? The law. But after that, after that, faith is come, we are what? No longer under what? The schoolmaster. So faith is come here. When faith is come here, you're no longer under the law. Are you seeing that? Mm-hmm. When faith is come, you're no longer under the tutor. 
tutors and governors. So chapter 4, when he says, an heir, as long as he's a child, differs nothing from a servant. So it means when you're under this, you're a servant. You're serving. But you're serving what? The law. To what end? It's supposed to bring you to Christ, but if you don't recognize that, what do you happen? It's just going in circles. You see that? He says, but he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father, which is this cross. Clear? But he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed by the father. Even so, we, when we were what? Children were in bondage under the earth. Elements of the world. So I wanted to show you something today. That word children is the word nephews. Nephew. It means infant. It means one who cannot talk. One who is voiceless. So the law made you what? <laughs> and that's how you can relate. <laughs> It says, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his what? His son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were what? Mm-hmm. Under the law, that we might receive. We might what? Receive. We might what? Receive. Which means you are already, you have, the posture you only needed to take was a receiving posture. Mm-hmm. Or something that already had been what? Prepared. Mm-hmm. When was it prepared? When it was here? Mm-hmm. Christian to Abra. So it was already an ongoing thing. Mm. I understand it. Mm-hmm. So we might receive the adoption of sons. The word sons there is different. It's not the word nephews. Mm-hmm. The word sons there is somebody mature. Mm-hmm. Somebody able to show the word responsibility. Mm-hmm. And because you are sons, how do I know my son? God has now sent what? The spirit of his son into what? Your hearts. You cry what? Abba Father. So you now begin to get linguistic ability. This one was voiceless. Mm-hmm. He can't talk. Now you are a son. You can speak. Mm-hmm. And the first reaction of anybody who has crossed over through the cross is what? Abba Father. Mm-hmm. Abba Father. Mm-hmm. These guys here, under the law, it was very difficult for them to contemplate God being Father. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you see, when you receive Father, you're receiving Father and His love. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Father and what? His love. We still have love issues in our lives right now because the gospel was not taught to us well. So, in a lot of things surrounding love and relationships, we're still under the law. (laughs) There's a difference between forgiving here and forgiving here. Peter is finding it amazing to say, forgive how many times? So, the person who's under duress of the burden of the law will ask, how many times? Yeah. So how many times did Jesus forgive us? Jesus forgave us once and for all. Yeah. And it's a damn deal. Yeah. That is how strong his covenant is. Yeah. We're the ones who are not believing mm-hmm. that we were forgiven. Yeah. That's why we have love issues. Mm-hmm. And our first love issue is that we are not so sure if our father loves us. Yeah. Because every time we have been presented to a father of wrath, yeah. Every time we contemplate the Father, we think what? Fire and brimstone is coming. Yeah. <laughs> so we go back to what? Cast <laughs> and unjustified. Yeah. And therefore we operate outside of what? Of faith. Wow. <laughs> so that is, that is how, one of the ways of beginning to understand if your journey of Jesus has really been understood. Mm. That's why you have to go back to Galatians. Let's go back again, we see. <laughs> he says, crying what? Abba, Father. Uh-huh. Crying what? Abba, Father. Are you seeing that? Uh-huh. I want to share with you something. If you'll allow me. Uh-huh. It might help us a bit. Yeah? Yes. So, you're seeing terms I'm throwing here. Servant. Heir. Son. If you see heir, son, you see what? Inheritance. Uh-huh. Have you seen that? Yes. Inheritance. Now, Ever heard of the prodigal son? Yeah. There is what? A father. Yeah? Uh-huh. And here there are two, two sons. sons. Yes. Then one son is asking for what? Inheritance. Inheritance. Is it playing out? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. So one son leaves and goes to a city. Um, joins himself to a city. And then he does what? Squanders. The Bible says squanders. What does he squander? It's inheritance. inheritance. Anybody who receives inheritance and the law squanders it. Mm. 
doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah. Squanders it. So he finished it. Jesus is very tactical. He's speaking something. He says, well, I think he has squandered. He degenerates. He goes to pigs. Oh. And starts what? Eating from there. Mm. He gets his nourishment. His devotional, devotional package. Okay. And then the Bible says he comes back to what? His senses. senses. He's awakened. So technically speaking, that son is Israel. Israel, Israel, Israel. Mm-hmm. So it's wonder. So he wants to come back to the Father. Yeah? But what does he say? Make me a servant. I'm not worthy, number one. I just want to come back and be what? A, a servant. servant. Yeah. Still wants to come be under the, the Lord. I just want bread. Mm-hmm. Keep me. Mm-hmm. So Jesus knows what he's talking about when he's doing the prodigal son because the Pharisees are there and he's talking. Mm-hmm. And then he comes back home. He finds what? Father is still there waiting for him. Yeah? So he's telling the father is still here waiting for you guys. Hmm. So when he comes back home, he's given what? A ring. Ring. A sandals. Sandals. And what? A chain. Six chains of silver. And the crown, yeah? Yeah. 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 And the robe. Yeah. yeah. So the father bypasses what? Servant. <laughs> and makes him what? Son. He receives him back as son. So the father has always wanted to receive us back as what? Son. Yes. But we are so in love with this thing. Yeah. Okay, fine. So he's been restored, and then there's a fattened calf. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Do you know what the fattened calf is? Mm-hmm. The fattened calf mm-hmm. kept there. Mm-hmm. Who complains? The other son. The other son. Mm-hmm. Who was seemingly close to the father? He didn't go yeah. mm-hmm. So we think the son is better. Yes. But this son actually is mocking equally under what? Under the law. So this is the Pharisee who knows where to be, but he's hindering these other guys not to get in. Uh, the son of yours went there and did what? Mm. Yes, why? why is he coming back? You've never even slaughtered for me what? Mm. Never even slaughtered. Said, but everything I have is yours. Mm. We don't like those invitations. The problem with us in this century, especially when we're understanding the gospel, mm. the difficult thing for us will be the ability to embrace the goodness of God yeah. in our lives. Yeah. We feel like something has to happen here. We have to sweat. Yes. Okay. Are we okay? We have to grind it. We have to work it out. Mm. <laughs> so look at this. Uh, so that's why I we need to finish this thing. Uh, so anyway, it talks about the bigger things. This is Galatians 4. Eh? Mm-hmm. So he goes, I want to go to that other place. Okay. Okay, so now he, let's begin from verse 17. They zealously affect you, but not well. Yeah, they would exclude you that you might be affected. Verse 18, but it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. 19, he says what? My little children, in whom what? I travail in birth again until what? Christ, Christ is formed in you. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice for I stand in doubt of you. So he's just rebuking them anyway. Now when he reaches there, he begins to bring in another example, mm-hmm. which is important for us. Verse 21. Tell me ye that desire to be under the law. Which is here. Mm-hmm. For it is written that Abraham had what? Two sons. Yes. So he's now he's introducing two sons. Mm-hmm. Prodigal son. How many sons are there anyway? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Abraham had two sons, eh? Look at this. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a born maid and the other by what? A free woman. We did this last week. Last week. Mm-hmm. Should we do it again? Yeah. Or oh, you understand it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that one again. Don't get tired of us going through the Galatians many times. Mm-hmm. I should say, like, some bishop somewhere, somebody is being delivered. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so Abraham had how many sons? Two. Two, two sons. But Sunday school told you? Many, many, many sons. <laughs> which is true, really. Which is true. Because the scriptures foresee that. Yeah. The Gentiles, right? That's all the many sons of Abraham. Yeah. Okay, so there are two sons, eh? Mm-hmm. One son there, there's another son here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and let's write what? Abraham here. Mm-hmm. Abraham. Abraham had two sons. Okay, one, one by what? By the yeah, help me out. Woman. One by the bond woman. By the free woman. Says bond, bondage. Free. Free. 
Uh -huh. So this is what? Ishmael? Ishmael. Ishmael. Says what? Isaac. 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 This is laughter. Mm -hmm. uh, this is who? The mother? Hagar. Uh -huh. okay. The mother? Sarah. Sarah. So this is Paul explaining again. And in his explanation, he's telling you one side is the law, one side is what? Yeah. Okay, let's continue. Mm -hmm. What does he say there? He says, one son of the flesh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Flesh, and this one is what? Promise. promise. Are you see that? Mm -hmm. Flesh and promise. Mm -hmm. And they say, these things are allegories. Mm -hmm. For these are what? Two covenants. Mm -hmm. So actually, these are covenants. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can make a covenant with the law, you can make a covenant with what? Grace. Grace. Mm -hmm. Or the promise. Mm -hmm. He says, one is from what? Mount what? Sinai. Mm -hmm. Yeah? One. Which is bondage, eh? Mm -hmm. And the other one is what? Zion. Zion. Mm -hmm. If you look at Hebrews chapter 13 or 12 there. Mm -hmm. Are you together? Mm -hmm. He says, then there's one, two Jerusalem. There's Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And then there's another one. Yes, Jerusalem. From above. So above. And this one is what? Earth. Hmm. Are we okay? Yeah. Is it in your Bible? Yes. <laughs> 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 so he says, but Jerusalem, which is from above, is free. Hmm. Yeah? yeah? Which is the mother of us all. Hmm. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not. Who are not able to bear? Sarah. Sarah. So I told you last time when God finds a barren woman, he tells them, Prepare a pre playing list. Hmm. Rejoice. Hmm. Sing all, barren woman. He yeah. <laughs> yeah. says, uh, for it is written, Rejoice, though barren woman, the bear is not. Break forth and cry thou that travailest not, for the desolate has bed what? Has more children mm -hmm. than we, he was what? A husband. Mm -hmm. Verse 28. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are what? The children of promise. So listen, listen to the phrase, so the language of Paul. Now we, brethren, mm -hmm. now we, mm -hmm. it's collective, mm -hmm. are the children of what? Promise. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. So we're not the children of what? Of the flesh, mm -hmm. we're the children of promise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he says, but as then he that was born after the flesh persecutes, he was that was born after the flesh, which is what? Ishmael. Mm -hmm. Persecutes what? The one of the so last, 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 last Thursday I showed you something. When we were growing up spiritually, you used to be told, and it might, be, it might infer, that uh, the nation of Islam is, came from Ishmael. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Uh -huh. And the Christians and the Jews came from what? Mm -hmm. Isaac. And that's the reason why the Muslims are always persecuting what? Christians, yeah? Mm -hmm. But it, it's a good allegory for our context. But when Paul is talking, Islam is 600 years away. Wow. It has not started. So we have to take and ask ourselves, who is Paul referring to? Yeah. You see, the enemy can take scripture and twist it for you to avoid getting the truth or what? Of that scripture. Mm -hmm. Are you clear? Mm -hmm. When Paul is speaking here and talking about Ishmael tormenting Isaac, he's talking about the things of the law. Mm. Tormenting what? The things of what? Mm. Of grace. Mm. Of the things of Christ. Mm. Are you understanding? Yeah. Jesus in the intertestamental years is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. As the one who's coming to fulfill the law. Mm -hmm. Who is persecuting him? The Pharisees, mm -hmm. the Sadducees, mm -hmm. the scribes, mm -hmm. the teachers of the law. Mm -hmm. They are on this side. They persecute anything what? Christ. Hmm. So if you are Christ carrier or a Christ hoster, anything that is instituted to persecute that grace and the expression of the spirit of Christ hmm. is of the law. Hmm. It's not Muslim. It's of the law. <laughs> it's of the law. Hmm. It can even be in a spiritual environment. Yeah. Are you understanding? Yeah. <laughs> so when Paul is talking, the context is we are talking about law versus what? Grace. Grace. Talking about flesh versus promise. Yeah. Talking about Sinai versus Zion. Mm -hmm. And I showed you about Sinai and Zion. And I showed you something, especially promise. These guys have come from Egypt, Egypt, going through the wilderness, wild, into that, the promised land. Mm -hmm. Just Canaan, yeah? Mm -hmm. They reach here, they want to go and do a Reiki. They go, they come back, 10 come back with a what? Five. Poor report. Mm -hmm. Evil. An evil report, it probably says, an mm -hmm. evil report. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing? Mm -hmm. They were going at what? The promise. Mm -hmm. They're going to the promise. 
allegory again. Mm. They come back, they were, they were there for 40 days. They come back here, God says, okay, one year for every day. Mm. Which mountain were they going under? Sinai. Here. Sinai. Mm. Which is supposed to be a mountain of what? Bondage. Mm. You receive to get into the promise, yeah. you have to live with the consequences of refusing. of refusing, which is what? You go back to bondage. Yeah. And people love bondage. Mm. Because here is in the wilderness. Eating free food. The shoes are growing with you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it looks nice, eh? Mm-hmm. You love manna. You don't want to go here because now manna will cease. Uh. Now you'll end into a place, a space called what? Sun, which means what? Responsibility. Responsibility. I don't want. If you love Sinai mm. going on. It's a place of what? It's a flesh. flesh. So God is killing flesh. Mm. <laughs> two, two individuals this size. Caleb and Joshua, mm-hmm. who believed, survived. They believed what? The word. Mm-hmm. Caleb said, our Lord is well able. Ew. He said, these people are like what? Bread to, to us. us. Yeah. Picture this. Jesus Christ. Same scenario. Mm-hmm. This is my beloved son. You know, well, what? Please. Yes. He goes through what? The wilderness like this. Mm-hmm. How does he survive the wilderness? Like Caleb and Joshua. They believed what? The, the word. word. It is written. Mm-hmm. It is written. Mm-hmm. It is written. So the enemy in the wilderness, when he's trying to, to he's trying to do what to do, to to tempt Jesus, mm. is bringing Jesus back to that place of what the law, mm. mm. yeah. bringing him back to the place of flesh. Mm. The contest in the wilderness is the place of what flesh, flesh. sinai, bondage, earth, law. Mm. Jesus says it's written, mm. it's written. And then he overcomes. Yeah. He comes out there with what? Power. power. Paul says, the working of miracles by the hearing of faith. Mm. He comes out with his power. Mm. Don't know if it's making sense. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the Bible says, nevertheless, the scripture says, cast out the bond woman and what? And her son. Mm. So that is, what, that, is what it, that is what is happening on the cross. Mm. We are putting an end to the bond woman, mm. putting an end mm. to the flesh, putting an end to that law, mm. putting an end to Zion, inviting you to, not to, to, to Sinai, Sinai, inviting you not to, to Zion. Zion. Mm. So every time you say, I'm just in a wilderness situation, hey. <laughs> mm. I'm just going through the wilderness. <laughs> mm. How you survive the wilderness is what? It's written. Mm. But most of us love wilderness because that's where we can cry and crash with God and say, "We just want what quails." Mm. I feel, I feel, I feel like quails today, Lord. Mm. You don't even eat bread; you just eat manna, not knowing it's Christ you are eating. John <laughs> chapter six: mm. Moses gave you manna in the wilderness, but you didn't know it was me. Yeah, and the bread of life. Mm. Say, so, yeah. John chapter six: Say, ah, you're the one. He said, yeah. So I say, if you eat of me and drink of my blood, mm. ah, they say, ah. <laughs> Making us cannibals, they go back where to the law. Yeah, it's a hard saying. Yeah, he was not telling you that so that you can enter into it with your power. Mm. So there are a lot of things that have been attached around what you call Christianity mm-hmm. that have become burdensome. Mm-hmm. That have that have taken you back where to the law. People don't love freedom. Mm. Can I do a diversion? Yes. Thank you. Let me do a diversion to help someone, somebody here. So we're just about to go to chapter 5, so we finish. Mm-hmm. But here, here, here is the diversion. <laughs> Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians. Just, just before Galatians chapter 3. Okay. Are we there? Mm-hmm. Three. Okay, let's begin from verse what? Uh, I'd, I'd say this one, I'll teach one, one day. That one day has come. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's try from verse, verse 6. Who also has made us what? Able ministers of the New Testament. Here, New Testament power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
He has made us able ministers. We are able of the New Testament, not of the letter, which is the law. Mm-hmm. Are we okay with that? Mm-hmm. But of what? The spirit. So you can see this is Paul again communicating the Corinthian, mm-hmm. just using different what? Terms. Mm-hmm. It says the spirit does what? Gives life. Are you there? Yeah. It says of the spirit for the letter killeth. So here, the bondage, Senai, the letter does what? Kills. Kill but the spirit does what? Gives life. I want you to understand that. If it's not life giving, it's the letter. Mm. <laughs> are, you, are you together? Mm. So, but if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones was glorious, so look at this. Mm-hmm. Can the law be glorious? Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah? Mm-hmm. How is it glorious? He says it's glorious. So that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance. Yeah? Mm-hmm. But listen to that. The next scripture says what? Next line says what? Which, Which glory was, was to be done away with? Wow. <laughs> Somebody is being delivered. Hey. <laughs> okay, let's, go. let's try that on again. Now we move from Abraham to Moses. <laughs> so we have Moses. Moses has something called what? The law. Mm-hmm. It kills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's glorious. Yeah? But the glory is what? Fading away. You know, most things that hold you in bondage are very attractive. Mm-hmm. There are some truths that hold you in bondage that are very attractive. Mm-hmm. You like them because they awaken the pain point. Mm-hmm. You've been told in the market, look for the pain point. Mm-hmm. And then solve what? Solve the pain point with a solution, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all of us love pain points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we love curses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pain point. Everybody's experiencing that. Mm-hmm. This thing is just going round and round and round. And that field is going round and round and round. It's only you're seeing in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. Why? Because, because it, God is saying there's a promise. Mm-hmm. Somebody has just not delivered to you the word of what? Deliverance. Mm-hmm. To make you get into the promise. Mm-hmm. They give you just an, enough doors for you to go around the mountain. Mm-hmm. I know when you're going around the mountain, it doesn't look like a circle. It looks like a straight road. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a straight road. It looks like narrow is the way. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's, let's go Paul. Paul he says, uh, verse 8 says what? How shall not the ministration of the Spirit rather be what? Glorious. Mm-hmm. So the one of the letter is glorious. The one of the Spirit, it is one of the Spirit, it gives life. It's more glorious, yeah? Mm. Which means this glo- the glory of the one of the spirit is not fading away. Mm. It's not fading. Mm. It's increasing. Yeah. Are you seeing that? Mm-hmm. It says, How shall not the ministration of the spirit be rather what glorious? Mm. Verse 9, For if the ministration of condemnation... Oh, this one is for condemnation. Mm. Ah. Mm. Condemnation. Mm. If there's any space in your life where you're feeling condemned, mm-hmm. it means... There's absence of what? Absence of spirit, absence of life. There's sufficient supply of what? The law which kills. It's glorious, but it's fading. Okay, it's in your Bible. It's not, this is Paul writing. For if that administration of condemnation be glory, much more does what? The administration of righteousness exceed, exceed in what? In glory. The administration, the administration, of righteousness will blind, will blind, and incapacitate the ministration mm. of condemnation. Mm. But we love condemnation. Mm. <laughs> For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that what excels. Verse 11 says, For if that which is done away was glorious, what is done away with? This one is being done away with. Yeah. Was glorious. Seeing then, seeing then that we have such hope, we use what great plainness of what of speech. You missed something. Yeah. What remains is much more glorious. What remains is what much more glorious. Mm. So much more. Obviously, we just know this side is much more. Mm. This one is fading. Mm. So there's weakness this side and there's progress this side. Yeah. Mm. So seeing that, seeing then that we have such hope, why do we have such hope? Because this one is spirit, life, 
more glorious, is excelling. Mm -hmm. That's where hope comes from. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. Anytime you begin to see absence of hope, it means we are leaning more to this side. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And not as Moses which put what? A veil over his face that the children of Israel could not what? Steadfastly look to the end. They could not steadfastly look to the end. Why? Because every time they did that, they felt what? Condemned. Yes. Yeah? But he's saying that one is going to be what? Abolished. Do you know what abolish means? Mm. Verse 14 says, But their minds were what? Blinded. Mm. Listen to this. Mm. For until this, this day. day. Now, until where, when Paul is writing, it's happening. But let me, I want to submit to you, even right now, yeah. it's still happening. Mm. Their minds were blinded until this day. They made the same veil and taken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Which veil is done away what? In Christ. So we had the law. We had the cross. We had Christ. That blinding effect is done, done away with. Now we have what? Understanding. The eyes of your understanding can now do what? Ephesians chapter 1 verse, 1, verse, chapter 1, verse 18. The eyes of your understanding can now be what? Enlightened. Yes. yes. <laughs> verse 15. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is still what? Upon their height. So two things that have been blinded, their heart and their mind. In Hebrews chapter 8 and 10, God has said, I have now put my law in your heart and in your mind. You don't have to climb the, mo the mountain like Moses. Mm -hmm. I have descended. Mm -hmm. I have descended in the person of my son. Now he's in your heart and in your mind. Mm -hmm. You can think clearly. <laughs> you can look at the author without being what? Condemned because you are liberated. Yeah. So even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is what? Upon their heart. Verse 16. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, anytime you have an opportunity to what? Turn. That word turn is the same same concept of the word what? Repent. Mm. To turn around. Mm. When it shall turn to the what? To the? Lord. What will happen? The veil is taken. Yeah. So most of us, that's what we do. We turn to the Lord. The veil is taken away. And then in James chapter 1, we forget. Ah, you look in the mirror. You look in the mirror and then you forget the, what man or what kind of person you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he says, was what? 17. Now the Spirit, now the Lord is what? The Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Liberty. And this is how you gauge if you're in freedom. There's liberty. I know people normally say things like the scripture means where the spirit of the Lord is Lord. Mm. <laughs> same, same thing. Same what's up. Mm. Now look at verse 18. But we all with what? Another open day. face. Which means not blinded with our minds, not blinded with our hearts. Beholding in a glass as the glory of what? Of the Lord. Are changed. So beholding in a mirror. This is a mirror. This is a mirror. Yeah? Have you seen that? It's a mirror. When you are building the tabernacle or the temple, there was a mirror. Mm -hmm. It was what I, like the word, a representation of the word. You see yourself. But you see, when you see yourself and you're under the other system, you're condemned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is possible to manufacture a sin conscious gospel. Mm -hmm. It reminds you every time of sin. Mm -hmm. You will never get deliverance. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, we all with an open face, which means the veil has been taken away. Why do we have an open face? We have an open face because we turn to him. Mm. Yeah? Behold what? Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are what? So, question number one. What are we beholding when we check into this mirror? Mm. What are we beholding when we get here? Okay. What, what does that scripture say? Beholding what? Beholding. Okay, let me, make, let me make it kindergarten for you. Mm. When you go in front of the mirror right now, what do you see? You see yourself. But when you look at this mirror, who do you see? Christ. Yeah. Because if you see yourself, you'll be condemned. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that is why it is possible to use the same, this same word to condemn you. Mm. <laughs> it says, we all with an open face beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord. We behold the glory of the Lord. Hebrews chapter, chapter 12. Looking unto Jesus. The author and the what? The finisher of our faith. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. The life I live in the flesh, I live by whose faith? The faith of the Son. Yeah. He is the author and the finisher of that faith. Mm. 
he will be gonna good work in you shall do it yeah so he authors it and he's bringing it what to completion but in the midst of that you go back to what so the hills and the corners are created when you turn back the thing is <laughs> you are just okay because you you try and operate in a in freedom then because you are steeped in an environment of bondage the people who feel okay the people who are bound they feel that their bondage is actually spirituality but it is it is but yes it's yeah so now you there's always a a guilt yeah you know so every time i'm telling you every time you begin to see that guilt you just know you're crossed over Mm. And in a split second, you can make a decision mm. to yeah. turn and face it. Yeah. So we are learning on a day-to-day basis yes. how to walk in what in freedom. Mm. So, but then look at this: the devil is not in town mm-hmm. yet. <laughs> this is just <laughs> this side of the law, if you could say so. Mm. Stuff. That's why many guys don't like. You know, here we forfeit responsibility. Yeah, here yeah, we forfeit mm-hmm. responsibility. Here we take up responsibility. Mm-hmm. Now let me show you something. He says, mm-hmm. "We are." So when we look into the law and behold His glory, what happens? We are being transformed into the same. How does transformation come? We are changed. Mm-hmm. We are changed. We are changed. Every day we have an opportunity to ascend to this side, mm-hmm. and we are changed. Mm-hmm. Every day is an opportunity to you are to be transformed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He says, "Into the same image, from glory to glory, from glory to glory." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even as by the what? No, two ways you can look at this glory to glory because let me do the kindergarten side. The kindergarten, the kindergarten side of moving from glory to glory is glory one, glory two, glory three, glory four. Because you feel like I'm getting radiated, radiated, radiated. Now you see that? Mm-hmm. That's kindergarten level. So all of us, it means you can qualify. Eh? Mm-hmm. But let me show you another way of looking at it. There are two kinds of what? There's the law that kills, it's what? Glory. Yes. There's a spirit and life, which is what? More, More glory. Glorious. So you are moving from glory to this glory. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you are moving from what? From glory, from glory to this to glory. glory. Just like uh, there was the faith of Abraham. Yes. Then now we have the faith of Christ. Yes. So you are moving from what? Faith, faith to, to faith. faith. You choose the side. Okay, so let's go back to her. Yeah, yeah. That was a sidebar. Yeah. What to finish? Does it make sense? Yes. The gospel, mm. again. Yeah. So now, when you understand this and you're going to talk to somebody about Jesus. Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I need that. Yes. So one of the ways you'll be knowing is this, mm. is uh, mm. you begin to, most of us are not comfortable with freedom. Mm. If you're not comfortable with freedom, you'll not be comfortable with truth. Mm. If you're not comfortable with truth, you'll not be comfortable with love. Mm. I was telling my wife the other day, if you come from a school of thought of what you're talking about, the law, versus what? The hearing of faith. Mm. As a parent, you can parent from the law. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can parent from the law. Mm. Number one, you can be a husband from the law. Mm. You can be a wife from the law. Mm. Actually, most of our issues are here. Mm-hmm. But there. It produces what condemnation. It's yeah, glorious, it's powerful, it's whatever, but yeah. it's fading. Hmm. So, it's not sustainable. So if it's, it's not sustainable, which means if I don't want to cross over this other side and it's fading, I have to PR it. Mm-hmm. I have to enforce what? More of this. I have to enforce more of that. Hmm. Yeah. <sighs> That's why sometimes deep religion is ornamental. There's a way we do what. There's a way we go whatever. There's a way we, you know? Yeah. And those relics. <laughs> so let's go back to Galatians. We finish. I think we can finish now. It's now easier to finish. But thank you for helping me to finish Galatians. Okay. So now once you once you've understood that, now us chapter five becomes easier. Stand fast therefore. So now Paul is giving you what? Practicals. Stand fast therefore in the what? The liberty. Which liberty? We are just seeing from us. Chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4. Mm. The liberty which we have, what? In Christ. Eh? Mm. He has made us free and be not, what? Entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now we know which yoke of bondage he's talking about. Yeah. Yeah? 
Verse 2, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be what? Circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. nothing. That is scandalous for Paul to say in his day. Yes. He says, verse 3, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is what? A debtor to do the whole law. Mm. He says, oh, so if you're beating your chest and saying, do the entire law then. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know you can't. Yeah. That's what Paul is saying. Mm. He's saying, verse 4, Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever you are. Of, uh, I, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law are what, what are fallen from so grace. grace. And sometimes you know you have been in situations where people have told you you're fallen from grace. Mm -hmm. When they actually mean you're fallen from what? Their law. Uh, <laughs> Yes. Because their law is what? Glorious. Yeah. In the law, it's not it's complicated. Because, uh, it's not complicated. Just look at how Jesus behaved in his day because he was being tormented by the same thing. Mm -hmm. It is offensive. It is, mm -hmm. That's why he used to say, I'm a stumbling block. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's continue. Let's continue. Let's finish. Today we have to finish. He says, For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by what? By faith. Through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Mm -hmm. For in Jesus Christ, neither what circumcision, circumcision. availeth anything, no uncircumcision, mm -hmm. but faith, yeah. which works by what love. love. See, I told you, if you don't know the truth, you don't like freedom. You don't like freedom. You don't like what love. Mm -hmm. It means then you always are responding to your relationships based on how you understand the gospel. Mm -hmm. So. If your gospel is that kind of oscillation, one time is condemnation, mm. one time you are free. Mm. I'm sure there's some relationship for you that are free. Others are by condemnation. Mm. <laughs> you have to be clear. That is how you normally call that double-minded person. Yeah? yeah. Look at this. He says, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Mm. Paul is really injured here, by the way. Mm. <laughs> Verse 7. He says, this persuasion comes not of him that what? Calls, calls you. you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lamp. He mm -hmm. says, that small thing that the Judaizers have brought in mm -hmm. will affect everything that I built. Yeah. Yeah. He says, I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will... Uh, that, you have no other mind. Yeah, you will not be otherwise minded. But mm -hmm. he that troubles you shall bear his judgment whosoever he is. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. Verse 11, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Mm -hmm. Then is the offense of the cross sees. He's saying, look at me. I was talking to you, the Gentiles. I'm from that side. Yeah. Why, am, why am I being persecuted? Mm -hmm. Am I not telling you the truth? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He said, these guys don't want it. Now you're talking about persecution. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the same one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> here. Mm -hmm. He said, I would, they were even cut off, which troubled you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is now Paul becoming personal. Mm -hmm. But starting for brothers or brethren, ye have been what? Called oh, unto yes. liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the what? To the yes, flesh. Yes. But by love, serve one another. In fact, mm. that's how you know. You know you can come from law and get into license. Mm. One extreme to the other. Mm -hmm. Just because you have freedom, you don't have freedom to do what? For licentious things. Mm. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you say, you, in fact, so love is actually the, normally the meter. Mm -hmm. The measuring rod. That's why I'm telling you, when he introduces people to the father, one of the concepts about fathering. Yeah? Forget Mother Nature and whatever. A father is supposed to be an embodiment of what? Of love. Full stop. But just, that's, that's not how he grew up. The gate would open and we run. And hide under that. <laughs> Daddy should open the door and the kids should turn to us. A father is an embodiment of love. Love is not effeminate. <laughs> God is what? Love. No. So he's been telling us faith doesn't work without love. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and love is not weak. Yeah. Okay. For God so loved that he gave. Yeah. I mean, it's a strong man who can give his only son yeah. to die for the entire world. Yeah. That's not a weak man. <laughs> okay. Where are we? What's what? 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus told us that, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and this is Paul saying, if you really understand the gospel, it will not be difficult for you to love the Gentile. Mm-hmm. It's telling the Judaizers. Yeah. And if you Gentile, if you really love, if you really know the gospel, it will be very difficult for you to love what? Judaism. The Jew. Mm-hmm. Verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah? If says what? But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that he be not what? Consumed. Consumed. Yeah. And you know what does that? The law. Mm-hmm. An eye for an eye. <laughs> I see that. Yeah. That's what the Lord does. If you, Paul is saying if you, de- if you degenerate in the things that you die to call mm. the law, mm. you will kill each other. Yeah. So I know people try to form committees about how did tribalism come, how did corruption come. It's all just this. Just this. There's the law and the hearing of faith. Mm-hmm. And the gospel comes from that. It's not the problem. That's the gospel. Anyway, <laughs> let's stay focused. <laughs> so he says, then walk in the spirit. So you can see. Again, we have come from where? Chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4. Mm. Chapter 3, he told us, did you begin to do the works of what? By the... Okay, let's go there so that we can just give you context. Okay, he says what? Uh, received in the spirit by the works of the law or the hearing of faith. Mm. So you see that? So now if you go to chapter 5, say, walking in the spirit... Mm. How do you walk in the spirit in the context of chapter 1, 2, 3, 4? You've died to something called the law. Yeah. So you're no longer condemned. Yeah. Which means that non-condemnation already has ushered you into what? The spirit. A walking of the spirit. Mm. There are no 16 secrets about it. Mm. How to ascend into this thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you see, you see, the problem is not even hearing that. Is if you can believe it and just be free. <laughs> it says... Walking in the spirit. No, notice he has not said crucify the flesh so that you can walk in the spirit. Okay, look at this. He says, uh, walk in the spirit and you shall not what? Fulfill the last of the flesh. So it's more than just two things here. And I know there's flesh, flesh, but also the, the workings of the law awaken the flesh, yeah? Because yes. these guys are telling you, go back and you have to get circumcised. Yeah. So there's the works of the flesh that have come by the Judaizers. So context again. He says, walking in the spirit, I shall not fulfill the desires of the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lasted against the spirit. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And the spirit against what? So these guys are in enmity. They're fighting against each other. Mm-hmm. Romans 8, he says that again. The spirit and the flesh are enmity, mm-hmm. one for another. Mm-hmm. Against, and these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things which, are, which you would. Mm-hmm. So look at this. Remember, there's a cross here. Okay. Just to put it in context. Jesus is there. There's... Grace, you can say so. Grace here and promise, yeah? Uh-huh. Promise, then there's law here. Uh-huh. And flesh. Yeah. So let's stay in context of this. What, what is Paul is telling us? Uh-huh. Comparing two things here. Uh-huh. So now all of you, the Judaism and the Gentile, are in the spirit because of what? The faith in Christ. Yes. Uh-huh. Clear? Uh-huh. So he says, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are this, adultery, fornication, and clean. So you see, the law will drive you there. <laughs> adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, hatred. Where is that again? Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that which you do such things shall not what? Inherit the kingdom of God. So if you stay this other side, these things will show up, whether you're a Judaizer or a Gentile. Yeah. 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 We are under the law. Yeah. And we are consistently of the law. Yeah. The sinful nature is basically the law. Uh, awaken. That's why he says that the law was pressed for transition to awaken that uh-huh. element. Yeah. So he says, look at this. But the fruit of the spirit. Which spirit, again, you can see, we have moved to what? Mm-hmm. Promise the hearing of faith. Of faith. Mm-hmm. That's the spirit. Mm-hmm. That fruit is what? Love. I know I know. you are told here the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Look at the context of Paul. Where is he coming from? First of all, you have a spirit. You can say, Abba, Father, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now you've crossed on the other side, you are sons. Mm-hmm. That sonship is producing what? Love, Love. joy, mm-hmm. peace, mm-hmm. long-suffering, gentleness, mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Faith, Self-control. meekness, temperance, against such there is no what? There is no law. 
Again, Saturday is not what? This one. By the way, a simple act of what? Gentleness kills. <laughs> are we okay? Mm-hmm. He says, uh, again, Saturday there is no law. And they that are Christ have what? Crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust, whether you are what? A Jew or a Gentile. Mm-hmm. Are you seeing that? Mm-hmm. Verse 20, what? 5. If we live in the Spirit, let us also what? Walk, Walk in, in the spirit. spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, mm-hmm. envying one another. All these things are in our settings. Mm-hmm. Now, chapter 6. Brethren, if a man be what? Overtaken in a fault. Just per adventure, just in case. Mm. One sleeps. Yeah? Mm. One tells us, ye which are what? Spiritual. So who are the spiritual? The spiritual are these ones. Mm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. You are spiritual. Don't go and gossip about all those guys in prayer meetings. Mm. So we need to pray for the son. So he spends through stuff, whatever. No? Mm. <laughs> he says, you... So this is how you measure how you are spiritual. Mm. You think you are spiritual. You think you are you have spiritual acumen. What do you do? Yes. Restoration. Mm. It's not such a one in the spirit of what yes. meekness, yes. considering yourself less. Thou also be what tempted. Yes. You can also be tempted. You, you you have seen yourself. You can be tempted to go this direction so much. Mm. Yeah. And in any case, that's what the enemy just uses. Mm. Yeah. Just cross the line a bit. Mm. Feel a bit sad for yourself. It's 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 okay. It's a, part, it's, it's a bit of therapy, you know, that's what you're told, yeah? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, he says what? That's what? Two. Bear ye one another's what? Burdens. Yes. And so fulfill the law of what? Christ. Christ. Are you seeing that? Mm-hmm. So if I uphold somebody and lift him up, yeah? Mm-hmm. Instead of pushing him down and saying, now, I have to give, you have to pass through these trips. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He says, if a man thinketh himself to be what? Something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. Mm-hmm. That's Paul now is dealing with the Judaizers who are actually haughty and are very elitist. Yeah? Yeah. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he, shall he have what? Rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear what? His own burden. Verse 6. Let him that is what? Taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth all good things. Okay, and I can use that verse. But I'll spare you for now because <laughs> it might not take you back to the flesh. <laughs> anyway, let's, I'm just joking. Mm. Verse 7. In fact, sometimes you find that's an only verse that somebody picks from there mm. and pushes. Mm. Guys, I have to give because I'm communicating to you what? Yet, sometimes the teaching I'm giving you is what? Mm. Yeah. Be not deceived. God is not what? Mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that okay. shall he what? Reap. Mm. Now, listen to this. Mm. So I know we have used that for offering because of that. Number verse six. Yeah. Verse six is clearly talking about uh, giving unto teachers or people who communicate to you. Yeah? Mm-hmm. But he's saying good things. Mm-hmm. Those communicate to you what? Good things. Mm-hmm. Not just God, those who communicate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I know guys have combined the two. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man so with so shall be what? Reap. Mm-hmm. So his people think it's it's a continuation of verse six in terms of sowing and reaping. Mm-hmm. Yeah? For he that soweth to his what? To his flesh. Mm-hmm. Shall also reap what? Corruption. Here again, we are here. Low flesh. Yeah? He that soweth to his what? To his flesh shall also reap what? Corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap what? Life everlasting. Again, this other side. So again, you can see it's a good scripture, but sometimes we use it. Yeah, it says... And let us not be weary in well doing. What is well doing? Well doing is here. Yeah, <laughs> in well doing. Uh, for in due season we shall do what? Reap if we faint not. We shall begin to see the fruit of fruit. Yeah. He says, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are what? Of the household of faith. Ye see how large a letter I have written. Paul, it was only six chapters. We know the Corinthians, you give them two letters. <laughs> but then you see the first, one of the first letters Paul wrote. You see how large a letter I have written unto you with some with my own hand. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be what? Circumcised. Only lest they should what? Suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. 
For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, mm. but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. You see that? Mm. Verse 14, But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor a circumcision, but a new creature. Wow. You can see he's repeating and repeating this thing yeah. again. Yeah. Verse 16, and as many as walk according to this rule, peace Amen. be on them and the mercy, <coughs> and mercy upon the, the Israel of God. Amen. From henceforth, because now you see when he's talking about Israel of God, it's because those are the guys who are dissenters Amen. in the work he was doing. Yeah? And he wants these guys to wake up. To wake, to wake up. Uh-huh. You cannot glory in the law. Uh-huh. Jesus has come and has delivered what? The real deal. Uh-huh. He says, for henceforth, let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Verse 18. Brethren, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, with your spirit. Amen. Now you can see the last two chapters are easier. Because you have understood chapter 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, application becomes a bit easier. Every time he talks about spirit or flesh, you know what he's talking about. Now next time when you're talking about fruit of the spirit, you shall know where it's coming from. The works of the flesh, you shall know where they're coming from. Are you seeing that? Yeah. Every, next time you see Abraham, you say, hey, don't rush into Abraham. Let's examine exactly what does Abraham mean to us right now. Yeah. Or Moses, the same, same thing. Mm.